Looks like Movado will be the next cameo character in Mortal Kombat 1. Plus on top of that, there's lots of details in the Ermac reveal that people missed. So of course we're gonna talk about it, but also what's the deal with that new mystery stage? All that and more discussed in today's video, because another day means more Mortal Kombat 1 news. I'm covering it all the time on this channel, so if you want to stay up to date, then make sure to subscribe and ring that bell so you never miss any future videos. And then after watching, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like down below, it helps helps the channel out a ton, and without any further ado, let's begin. Starting off with the trailer release date, if you watch all the way to the end of this brief preview, then you know that the Ermac gameplay trailer is coming next week. Which means I was right, and I'm very happy about that, because when I made that prediction in my previous video, I thought I was being a bit too bold there. Maybe one week was too early, but turns out I was right. Believe it or not, we have less than 10 days before Ermac finally becomes playable, so get excited. He's one of my personal favorite characters, I don't know about you, but Ermac's always got great gameplay. And in just a little bit, we also get his gameplay trailer, which of course is exciting. But next up, let's talk about Movado. I was sure that Farah was going to be the next character, because why would Netherrealm pair Farah with Homelander? And then on top of that, Farah has a lot in common with Ermac. They were both in Mortal Kombat X, and they both served under Kotal Kahn, so I thought for sure that Farah was going to be next. For Pete's sake, Farah's game model even got leaked. It's already in the data files of Mortal Kombat 1, and yet, Nope, we're getting Movado. If you blinked, then you missed him, because he was on screen for a fraction of a second, but if we freeze frame, there he is, looking very true to his Deadly Alliance appearance, which was the game where he made his debut. I know a lot of you watching are young, so maybe you never played the 3D era game, so allow me to briefly explain what Movado's all about. For starters, he fights with Cabal's weapons, and that's because he beat him in single combat, left him nearly dead, and stole his iconic weapons. Keep in mind that Movado is a red dragon, unlike Cabal who works for the black dragons. These two factions have always been at war with each other. But on top of fighting with Cabal's trademark hook swords, Movado also has these strange bungee cables that he uses to maneuver around the battlefield. In fact, that's the one thing about Movado who stands out. I can't think of any other character that shoots out bungee cables to maneuver around left and right, back and forward, you get the idea. And as a result, it's very likely that he's going to use those as a cameo fighter and hopefully giving your main character way more mobility options. I'm hoping we can swing around the stage like Spider-Man. That would be really sick. And then if I had to guess his fatality, once again, I think it's going to be straight out of Deadly Alliance. And that's because Movado was not in Deception, and while he was in Armageddon, no character in that game had their own unique fatalities. Instead, you had the creative fatality. However, that being said, his fatality could also be something completely new, because Tremor's fatality was completely new despite him being in past games, so I suppose anything could happen, but I'm just saying if I was a gambling man, money on the table, I'd be willing to bet that Movado's fatality is going to be a reference to the 3D era game that he debuted in. But hey, as you all know, I love making these videos interactive, so let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. What do you think Movado's gameplay is going to be like, and what do you think his fatality is going to be? Post all your guesses and predictions down below, because like I keep saying in all of my videos, I truly do read each and every comment. Comment, so grab that keyboard and make your voices heard. Because next up, it's time to talk about Ermac himself, the main focus of this gameplay preview. Pretty much the first thing everybody noticed is that he's wearing a mask, unlike in the original Combat Pack trailer and also unlike in the story mode, where he never covers up that ugly mug. And as a result, we now know for a fact that Ermac's gear piece is going to be his mask, which was a fantastic choice by Netherrealm, cover up that man's face. And honestly, I find it really funny how Netherrealm chose to show that in this gameplay preview. They were like, hey, we gotta let the fans know right away that Ermac has the mask, okay? The trademark ninja character you know and love from the past games, the fan favorite popular character, does have his mask just like he has in the previous games. However, unfortunately, it looks like we're stuck with that costume. Now, me personally, I don't dislike the costume, but I do dislike how the DLC characters only have their default outfit, because in Mortal Kombat 11, they had three or four costumes costumes, and the rest were all palette swaps, but you get the idea, there are multiple outfits to choose from. Whereas in Mortal Kombat 1, it looks like we've gone backwards, and now every DLC character only gets one costume, which is kind of odd because we see them wearing alternate costumes in the story mode. Quan Chi has at least two, and Ermac actually has three different costumes in story mode alone, but unfortunately, none of them actually look 
good. As of right now, unfortunately, Ermac's default skin that you see in story mode is his best looking skin out of the three. Now with all that being said, it's very likely there's going to be DLC costumes down the line, so make sure to grind those dragon crystals and get those costumes for free. Don't spend your money unless you really have to. Next up, there's one tiny detail I wanted to point out in this gameplay preview that not many people notice, so real quick, watch it one more time and pay close attention. Outworld souls cannot live in an Earthrealm blade. Did you see it? Or rather, did you hear it? If you listen closely, Ermac actually has multiple voices speaking at the same time, whispering something at a much lower volume than his main voice. And I just love that tiny attention to detail because Ermac is a combination of souls. Hundreds, if not thousands of souls shoved into a single body. And even though King Jared is doing his best to stay in control, it's very likely the tiny voices of other souls are seeping out, even mid-conversation. And that's so cool to me, I absolutely adore that tiny detail. Once again, in the comment section, let me know all your thoughts about Ermac. How do you feel about his new costume? Are you happy that his gear piece is the mask? And also, what do you think his gameplay is going to be like? I'm almost wondering if he's going to have a stance switch very similar to Shang Tsung. Or in other words, he's going to have two completely different movesets. One of them is going to be the Ermac we know and love, and then his other stance is going to be more like King Jared. I think that is very possible, although some players have theorized that Ermac is also going to have some attacks from Sindel too, because don't forget her soul is merged with his. Now me personally, I don't think we need that because Sindel's already in the game, so unless you give him something completely new that Sindel's had in past games but does not have in Mortal Kombat 1, then I just don't want him to also be Sindel. It seems a bit redundant in my personal opinion, but when it comes to King Jared, put him in. Put those attacks in, please that character's never been playable, and he's dead in every single game, including the game that is a reboot where things could be changed, Netherrealm still killed him, so his gameplay better be in the game somehow. Okay, but now finally for our last topic, let's talk about the mystery stage because a lot of people seem to have forgotten that all the way back in Quan Chi's reveal, we saw a new stage. It was only in screenshots, but still, this stage is completely new. As of right now, you can't play on it, and I don't think it's even in the data files right now. So even if you dig deep into the files of Mortal Kombat 1 and use mods, there's still no way to access this stage. It only appeared in the screenshots. So what's the deal with that? Well, once again, a bunch of fans have their own theories online, some of which I do think have credibility to them. For example, one very popular theory is this new stage happens in the story mode expansion. Or in other words, when story mode part 2 gets here, we're going to be able to fight on that stage. And of course that would mean the stage becomes playable in every other mode as well. Casual, king of the hill, ranked, you get the idea. And that theory does have me interested for a couple of reasons. On the one hand, I hate having to wait for a stage that was already revealed all the way back when Quan Chi got debuted. However, at the same time, I love the idea of getting a bunch of new stages when Story Mode Part 2 gets here. Because think about it, there's no way it's only going to be one stage. Well, I guess it could be, but that seems very very unlikely. I'm 90% sure we're going to get several new stages when Story Mode Part 2 does get here. Because keep in mind, the exact same thing happened with Mortal Kombat 11. When we got the Story Mode expansion, and the new DLC characters on top of that, we also got some new stages, and in fact, they were the best stages in the game, in my personal opinion. We got Kronika's stage on the outside with the orange rocks and all that cool stuff. We got the Deadpool. We got the classic arcade stages, the Soul all that awesome stuff. And once again, I'm not a gambling man, but if I was, I'd be willing to bet the same thing is going to happen in Mortal Kombat 1. When Story Mode Part 2 does get here, we're not only going to get new characters and a brand new story mode, we're also going to get some new stages to fight on as well. But hey, that's just a theory. Let me know your thoughts and theories in the comment section down below. I know for a lot of players, new stages are not that big of a deal, but for me personally, I love them. 
I love stages, they're so interesting to me, and in this game, Mortal Kombat 1, we finally have good music for the stages too, so I'm excited to hear the music in these new stages, I bet it's gonna be great. And you know what, real quick, I wanted to end today's video on a positive note, I went over to the Active Player website, which tracks the players for a lot of different video games, and according to their data, Mortal Kombat 1 has actually gained players in the last 30 days, and it looks to be a pretty good amount. However, with that being said, take this new info with a grain of salt because originally this website's numbers did have a glitch and two of the months had the exact same numbers but it looks like now they've been fixed i actually emailed them and said hey What's going on there? Is that a glitch? Or did Mortal Kombat somehow magically gain the exact same numbers that it lost in the previous month? But it looks like now it's been fixed. I can't find these repeat numbers anymore. So that's good. Maybe the issue has been fixed. And if so, that's really cool because it means these numbers are actually accurate. But once again, I don't want to jump the gun because it could be once all of April's numbers are in that the player base did not actually go up. Once again, this is just the last 30 days. It's not the entire month, but I'm hopeful that maybe Mortal Kombat 1 can slowly make a comeback or at the very least raise its numbers a little bit. I'm an optimistic guy and I want all fighting games to succeed. Thank you so much for watching everyone and I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please leave a like down below. It helps my channel out a ton and then finish that combo by subscribing and ringing that bell so you never miss any future videos. Make sure to come back next time and as always, stay underdogs.